welcome to another video. In today's video, it's a project that has been in the works for a really long time, like maybe nine or ten months. So here is my 12 volt system. So this is what currently switches um, 48 volts to 12 volts. And it puts it into that breaker box and then it runs my furnace and some lights so this is a new converter so i'll have one two converters so backup so i've had my backup there in case this dies for a long time but to actually do this work it has to kind of be ideal day because I have to have enough solar. The temperature has to be right. It can't be too hot, too cold because I just got to leave doors open, you know, because it's going to all the power is going to be shut down and the door has to be open. So I have some light, right? So if it was super hot, I couldn't do it. If it was super cold, I couldn't do it because I need the heater on. So it's a day finally that I can just do it. Now, if there would have been an emergency and, and this thing had died, well, <laughs> I would have just been able to you know switch everything but what i am doing is i'm found this thing here which this is actually the same company as that gizmo there which is just basically a breaker box or a fuse panel excuse me but this is a double right so this actually has the ability to take two sources of power perfect for what i've got here that way i have always got a backup just wired into the system so i have two of those always one's gonna run lights and one's gonna run the furnace and maybe a couple lights on uh on you know also right um but then if i ever have one of these die it's just a simple moving some wires around to go back to having full power and either one of these is enough to run everything by itself so so that's what I'm doing today. And that starts with shutting off a bunch of stuff. But first I have to make a wire. So this is some 10 gauge speaker wire that I bought to do my 12 volt system with. It's super awesome wire as far as like being able to run it and pull it through stuff it's super easy to deal with but it's actually more wire than a normal 10 gauge wire and so all my wire strippers mess it up and so i mean if you nick a couple wires it's no big deal but right here in this section of video i mess up twice so maybe even three times i don't remember but yeah i just nicked too much wire and then just had to cut it all the way back and start all over again so yeah i need a bigger wire stripper if you know a wire stripper brand for this just leave it down in the comments section because i'm telling you I'm in need of a big gauge wire stripper that doesn't mess up my wire. So, yeah, after messing with this for quite a while, actually, I did get them all wired up and figured out. Got the lugs, and <laughs> turns out the included lugs were the wrong style of lug. And I didn't really realize that until later in the video. Spoiler alert. Now, here's my crimpers. Uh, I think they're Gardner Bender, and the, the uh, handles are actually coming off of them. So I need, a, I need a new quality crimper as well. Crimping is pretty much a DC wiring thing. Don't really crimp an AC. Yeah, 
my heat gun that's rattling around from dropping it for years it so seems to work just fine so I'm not quite sure what's rattling around in there but oh boy I'm telling you I bought that thing and thought I had bought a real high-end one and drop it a few times it's a real high-end one Nikita builds a good uh, heat gun but it's not really drop rated just drop it and I think it was even dropping on carpet when I was dropping it I had a different heat gun I don't remember what happened to it it was a cheap one I bought off eBay what could go wrong right but something went wrong I can't remember what but then I went to the uh, a tool shop and bought the top end one and you know just having a box of heat shrink and electric parts and all the little stuff I have boxes and boxes of electric stuff um, a lot of that is because I'm at the beginning of the build so when I buy stuff I just buy a bunch of extra but it's just nice to have extra stuff laying around because if you need to do something off-grid and you need to drive all the way to like Home Depot is like it's a good 45 minutes to Home Depot it's a little quicker to like an Ace Hardware but it's pretty rare that Ace Hardware is going to take care of my needs although they do have a better hardware selection as far as like nuts and bolts and all that kind of stuff uh, Home Depot kind of fails there Lowe's is good but and, uh, Ace is good for that stuff but running a stock I have so much stock uh, and it's just it's just the way you have to do it when you live uh, that far away from places the hardware store I was just gonna <laughs> gonna kill your vehicle with gas all right so the first major issue is that the company sent these with this and those don't go on there those screws don't come out and I kind of buggered this one a little bit trying to get it out so they need like Forked models to go in there now. I think I might be able to just clip this and then just put that in there, but ugh, no bueno. Yes, the stress of the electrical work because, regardless, it's just stressful. It's just things go wrong, things could blow up, maybe not blow up, I don't know, but it's scary. But it's all done. I didn't film it all because I'm a horrible content creator. And I was uh, simply just trying to get this done because I started to run into little issues. But my little issue, I just took a little uh, cutters and just toot, 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 knocked a little uh, wedge out of the front of them and they slid right in perfectly. So I saw that problem. Everything's wired together. Everything's put together. It's about ready to switch the switches. Hit the switches. Zero fun. Zero fun doing electrical work. <sighs> stress, maximum stress. Because this is a lot of money of stuff right here, you know? And just one little mistake. And now I'm trying to remember what order to turn everything back on in. I'm pretty sure I go battery. And then I turn on one. This is unit one and I turn on unit two then I go over here and I hit my solar on and I hit my solar on and there's no scary sounds <gasps> and let there be light and no explosions we love it still waiting for PV to kick in my settings are all PV voltage still at zero DC voltage uh, everything seems to be working I keep this one on batteries voltage that's correct the battery voltage is correct. 
this one I keep on the PV input just to see if we got solar or not. <sighs> Relaxation. But I haven't really... This is what I work on. So now I need to figure out which one of these lines is my light next door. Put a fuse in there and test it. And cycle my my um, furnace as well. Here we go. All day long. And this thing is not outputting. <laughs> I'm just like, ah, oh, unbelievable. So there is something over here called ACC. I don't know if there's some kind of control you have to pull, apply to it for it to work. I have to get a hold of the, the, the person I bought it from. But basically I spent all day to have the exact same everything with a lot of wiring. So it didn't work. Got my backup. So if this little guy would have gone out and I was like in an emergency and I put this together, I still would have been screwed. Boy, that would have been depressing. So, but now I'm just in the same boat. Like I got one working unit and not one working. I got now I got a uh, tech support. Oh, my favorite thing in the world, not.